<laughs> okay, Age of Extinction. This movie has its fair share of downsides, but I want to talk about one of its saving graces that I'm pretty sure we can all agree on, and arguably one of the best antagonists in the entire franchise as a whole. Lockdown. Now there's this criticism of Age of Extinction that when it came out, one of the biggest issues for a majority of the fandom was these new wild designs that were way less robotic and more human inspired. That parts of their alternate forms had way less presence in robot mode, making the designs kind of unbelievable. Whereas the OG Bayverse ones were more realistic in relation to the vehicles that they took. And this is kind of significant because with Lockdown, uh, because with Lockdown, uh, yeah. That issue never went farther than with him, and his slim skinny form. The criticisms of Lockdown's designs line up pretty well. He looks too thin to transform into his car. He almost looks too human in proportion. He doesn't have much personality in his design. But, you know what? I kinda like it. Here's why. Here's why, let me explain. So it's been kind of implied that the Transformers have some level of control over their appearances in robot mode based on scenes like this and characters like this. And a pattern I've noticed with the Decepticons in the Bayverse is that they tend to build themselves up bigger and scarier in robot mode by breaking down their vehicle parts further into all these gigantic spikes and claws, and these more alien faces and adding more extra muscle to themselves. Which, in my theory, is something that they do intentionally to make themselves far more imposing and terrifying to us humans. It makes sense why they would want to sacrifice as much of their alt modes to look as intimidating as possible in their true forms. That's just the most Decepticon thing to do. And on the other hand, the Autobots usually keep as much of their vehicle parts intact in robot mode as they can. Or at least they used to. Which I think is done to put humans at ease and give them as much of a sense of familiarity as they can. I think it would strike the Autobots as an action that would lower tension by walking around covered in something more easily recognizable to us fragile humans. Now I've noticed in fight scenes that these choices tend to get in the way of combat from time to time. The choice to have this much bulk for both factions tends to make it harder for both the Autobots and the Decepticons to navigate the chaos around them in battle. And a lot of times they're easily subdued or knocked over in confusion, and a lot of battles come down to whoever is just more agile and mobile. But for Lockdown, that's never been the case once. <clears throat> Except for that time. He breaks down his vehicle parts so much when he transforms that he's basically just what whatever you would call this. A lot of fans a lot of fans hate this, but practically speaking, his less busy form gives him a whole new degree of agility. He's able to effortlessly parkour himself around his opponents now maneuver him. He's able to pick himself up easier. He lands lighter on his feet. He can climb up structures without a loose piece of him scraping up against anything. He, he, he can parkour. He can do parkour. He's so physically unbound, and that's most likely because he made out this form for himself so that he would be far more efficient in combat. And that makes all the sense it needs to because He's a contract killer. He's not on any side, at least not in this continuity. And while the Decepticons and Autobots reflect their tones in their robot forms, Lockdown has no such obligation to be intimidating or cautious. Even his face kind of looks like it was modeled after the Cybertronian God, which further proves that he's never tried changing his physical nature unless it was strictly necessary. He just keeps to his own origins. He doesn't... He's always just kept to his own origins. He, he's, he's not wanting to take inspiration or... Or he make something of yourself. Leave now. The point is, his design not only gives him more edge in combat, but by doing so it portrays his personality, and only desire, which is to get the job done. And his dialogue in the movie really conveys that. Like little children, always fighting, making a mess out of the universe, then I've got to clean it up. There's a reason Lockdown is one of the most appreciated antagonists across all the Transformers films. He's always so level-headed while also being threatening and menacing in other scenes with a distinguishing professional undertone to it. An alliance is a contract. And contracts, like you, expire. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. His robot form still lacks a lot of personality. There's not much room to deny that. Lockdown's design is still the epitome of that late Bayverse era design what issue the where the bots this? were just left empty, if not only any sign that they can transform into a vehicle, but even more so, they walked as far away as they could from those recognizable G1 traits. <laughs> but just just take a look at them, side by side. Yeah, they certainly don't look similar, but in my opinion, they give the same vibe of a highly skilled Cybertronian bounty hunter who takes no side. Decepticons, scum! Oh, I'm not one of them. Name is Lockdown. Decepticons pay real good for info, battle plans, access codes. Your friend should net me some sweet upgrades. All things considered, I think they really hit the nail on the head, capturing that cold-blooded contract killer and energy in live action in both design and execution. In fact, I... Alright, you know what? I'm gonna get a little controversial. Let's go back to that topic of the post-Ark of the Moon designs. It's characters like Last Night Barricade and the Wreckers that really suggest they can influence the robot mode appearances. Like, do you really think they were just born like this? And after the Autobots and Decepticons spent a decade on Earth with no way off and just having to stick around, I think it makes perfect sense that they would eventually take more inspiration from aspects of human society and culture that they would admire. If you relocated, you would inevitably get sucked up in the new little world before you knew it. So I like the idea of it happening here, with these aliens integrating to human society a little bit more via their appearances. That's even more reason why Lockdown's design is superb and amazing, because his robot form reflects his status as an outsider. Again, he's not menacing like the Decepticons, nor is he casual like the Autobots. Heck, he's not even showing much inspiration for being a Cybertronian, and certainly not showing any sign that he's been around humans very much. Ignore that. His only noticeable features reflect his experience and status as a contract killer. I think it makes perfect sense even if it really, 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 really doesn't translate well into toys. In fact, one of the only things I liked about The Last Night, which was also one of my biggest pet peeves, was that it showed signs of both the Autobots and the Decepticons living in relative peace while they focused on evading the humans who were hunting them all indiscriminately. And the concept of the Autobots and Decepticons putting the war aside and trying to integrate into Earth society was such a genius idea to me. And one of my favorite ideas as a concept for a sequel has always been the Autobots and Decepticons finally burying the hatchet in order to defeat Unicron and save Earth after they had all finally found a home on it. It's just a shame that they didn't delve into it as much as I wish they did. They, like, they showed us this dealer guy who sold parts and weapons to humans, Autobots, and Decepticons. They, uh, showed Dreadbot Robbie Banks. Uh, sort of. They showed us... They showed, a. Uh, uh, they showed Top Spin playing Come volleyball. On, you said no work today. Let's get your pale ass legs and help speak. I'm working here, all right? Uh, uh, they showed a. Uh, Is this an Autobot hookup site? Nah, just go here to dream. Check out that classy chassis. Whoa, look at the junk in her trunk, eh? Porn. That's it. Shut your big ass